What's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be doing a Mono Earth Monks deck tech video. Some of you might know that I spent a lot of time pre-Opus 11 working on various monk lists. So today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite ones. Uh, but before we get into the video, I just wanna mention my social media accounts. You can check me out on Facebook at The Missidia Post and on Twitter at the uh, Missidia The. And don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube so you can help me grow my channel. Uh, finally, I just wanna thank my patrons because it's because of you that I get motivation to keep working harder and making more videos. So if you want to check out my Patreon, you can do so as well at patreon.com slash the post. So the idea behind this monks deck is that you have a powerful deck that can get on board early while developing backups. It can push damage and then when you need to push through the, to win the game, it has plenty of removal options to kind of just snowball or, or point removal or or do whatever you need to do. So it's, it's very versatile, it's very powerful, uh, and, and it only has one small drawback, which is backup destruction, and I'm not talking about your opponents. So this is all possible because of Ursula, which is a legend we got in Opus 11 uh, and, and Ursula really just makes the deck tick so before we can kind of go over the entire deck we do need to talk about Ursula and how she is built around in this deck. So Ursula is a 4 CP forward, 5k power, job monk, category 4. When Ursula enters the field, choose one monk or card name monk of cost 2 or less in your break zone, play it onto the field, put one monk or card name monk other than Ursula into the break zone, choose one of the two following actions. Until the end of the turn, Ursula gains 4000 power and brave, or choose one for deal it damage to Ursula's power. So because of the nature of putting one of your own forwards or backups into the break zone, you have a, a very risky type of deck because self backup destruction is is really hard to win with. And if you want examples of that, just look at a lot of lightning cards that want you to break backups. Look at Lulu uh, and, and look at the current Knicks and, and we're going to see how that's going to work out. But generally, it's it is a significant price to pay because you lose the CP for future turns that that backup's going to give you. You're also going to have to replay another backup to be at maximum efficiency. So you have to be in a deck that's going to win soon uh, or that can replace those backups efficiently. So that would be the first limitation of Ursula is that you have to... Uh, accommodate or you have to account for the backup destruction or forward destruction. The second thing that we really need to think about when we're playing with Ursula is that her second ability uh, scales with her power. So if she's 5,000 power, breaking a backup to do 5,000, well that's what Lulu does in, in Lightning. That's not that great on a forward. But if she was able to kill something by killing a monk, well, then she'd be amazing. So how can we get her power level up? So with those two things in mind, how can we mitigate some of the backup destruction and how can we raise Ursula's power level? You now have your avenue for building any sort of monk deck. And there's more monk decks than just Mono Earth. I built a Mono, uh, sorry, a Earth Wind uh, monk deck with the Star Sybil package. Uh, so a lot of efficiency in building there. I built a Earth Fire monk list uh, that used some of Fire's monks to kind of uh, give you some more targets for beneficial monk uh, synergy. Uh, and I also built a Earth Water list that was built uh, not just around monks but also Final Fantasy IV synergy. I, I decided to pick the the mono earth list to talk about today because I think that that one is kind of a very simple, uh, very straightforward, and it gives you the idea of what you can do with Ursula, and then you can take her yourself and you can start building all the other uh, decks that she fits into because once you have a monk package built around her, you can really fit in a few other little packages here and there to kind of make the monk's deck your own creation. All right, so now let's talk about some of the monks that we've put in this deck to work with Ursula's ability. The first monk that I, I looked at was the Opus 10 monk, and the reason was that I, I, at the time I had been running Star Sybil, and this was a Star Sybil target, but I have since grown to like this monk quite a bit. Uh, 3 CP is a good CP cost to have on a forward. It's uh, not too much of an investment. It's easily playable off backups, and it's uh, good for soaking up certain types of removal uh, compared to some of the four CP cards you might add. Uh, but it also has this dull one active card named Monk, 
this monk gains a thousand power per uh, until the end of the turn. And this is actually fairly easy to do when you have two to three monk backups, when you have other monk forwards, it makes it hard for your opponent to block this card and it can kind of get out of hand. So I definitely like this monk quite a bit, more than I thought I was going to when I initially had included it as a star civil target. And of course, with any monk or, or job monk, you can break it for Ursula's ability. Next up is the 2CP Opus 1 6K Monk, and this is actually kind of a funny one because you might think that all oh, this card is really doesn't have much going for it, but because it's 2CP, Ursula can bring it up in, and that's very important because when your backup line is full and you play an Ursula, you want to be able to bring something back from the break zone onto the field. Uh, this monk also gets powered up by Anna Crow to become a 2CP 7K, uh, and then by our other power up uh, things, she can become incredibly powerful uh, for such a cheap uh, price point, and it really kind of it feels bad for your opponent to remove her because they don't want to pay for uh, any removal on 2CP forward, and it also soaks up things like Veritas and Famfret. So this is a really solid inclusion for monks. Uh, and then finally for forwards, I have Yang, uh, and it's a real big debate whether to play this Yang or the Opus 4 Yang that can play Ursula for free and then gets a, a 1k in Brave. The reason I'm playing this Yang right now is it just puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. It makes them have to have an answer for your monks or you're going to remove something. And it also stacks really well with Ursula. If you play this on Ursula uh, and then she gets that 2k power boost, then you can use her ability. So it has a really good synergy with, with Ursula uh, for what I'm trying to do with my deck. But I also think that it's definitely worth playing the other Yang. I think it's worth trying uh, three of him or a combination or, or something. But for this deck, I, I chose this uh, Yang specifically. The backup line has three different monks. They're all multi-playable though, so you can play as many as you want. This is the new Opus 11 monk uh, that has a one uh, one Earth CP doll and break him to do 3,000 damage for every monk you control. So it doesn't include himself, but this gets up to 9k pretty easily. Gets up to 12k pretty easily. You can really rack up a lot of damage. This is you're going to use this more than you are expecting, and of course it can be broken for Ursula's effect. I also brought the Opus 4 Monk in, which is just a little bit of protection. Uh, it can protect your Ursula or other forwards, um, which is kind of nice, although you're not going to use it nearly as much as you will the previous Monk. And then finally, I put in the other Opus 1 Monk. Uh, again, just a really cheap action ability uh, that can kind of push a turn if you need. It can. Uh, boost Ursula, although you'd never want to do that because you could just break this to boost Ursula. Uh, so really, uh, it's just in there for the monk count and then to, just to have that cheap action ability if you need it. So next I'd like to address Ursula's power. It's pretty low for you to use that second ability and the first ability is really good. You can always faint with it and I like to do that quite a bit. I'll attack and, and see if my opponent's going to block because they know that I have that ability. Uh, and you could use both abilities but then you're clearing two backups for maybe a forward and a backup or something and that's not sustainable so it has to be for the win. So. You could look at summons as well, and I know that some people are running things uh, like the 2CP Golem or other sort of, uh, power-up summons, but then you're still paying a lot of resources. So whenever you cast something that boosts power, if you cast Carbuncle for 2CP, uh, maybe it's going to return to your hand, you still lost that CP, and you're still expending resources. So let's say you do cast a, a power-up summon, it's like that summons what you're casting to do the damage and you're still extending resources. What if you could just break a backup and kill something? That would be truly the most effective way to use Ursula. So all of my power-ups are going to be natural. I'm not going to have to uh, use my hand to be able to boost her and then I can just uh, not only swing with her in combat, I can use her break ability to disrupt my opponent. So the first card we're going to look at, we already talked about, was Yang and this is just a power boost. You're getting a forward uh, and that's huge. So uh, this one's a little different than the rest of the cards I'm going to talk about. This isn't forever, uh, but it is just a solid card that has a ton of synergy with Ursula. 
And a crow is going to be the first of our passive anthems uh, that will basically just, always, she's always going to make sure your Ursula is 1k stronger. Uh, so with now Ursula at 6k, then you're starting to get a little bit closer to a desirable 7 to 8k power. Ingus is the same thing. He is going to boost Ursula by a further 1k, so now you can get her up to 7k if you have Anacro out. But his action ability is actually very easy to use as well. Uh, it's not something you're going to be using all the time, but in Mono Earth, it is incredibly easy to use and always good to threaten with. People always forget that, you, that he, he can do that as well, so don't forget that he has that action ability. Wall is going to be a card that will give Ursula 2k every single turn. So if you have Anacro out, Ursula can be an 8k every turn, and every turn you're going to have when you get to combat, an 8k ping available that's harder for your opponent to interact with because the ability is already on her. She's not going to lose 2k power if they kill Wall. They could kill Anacro and she might go down to 7k, but once Wall's done his thing, it's very difficult for Ursula to lose her power. And similarly, we have Kadaj, who can also give 2k every single turn to Ursula, and he has the added benefit of protecting himself by uh, going away and then coming back. And with this combination of cards, you will pretty much always be able to keep your Ursula at a high power level and be able to take full advantage of her second ability, which is, in my opinion, the, the, the best way to use her. Now we'll address the concern of breaking your own backups to use Ursula's ability. We've got a bunch of cards in the deck that are going to be able to recur backups uh, or recur Ursula, so let's get into it. So Ursula herself is going to be one of our main ways to recur monks because every time you play her, uh, she'll bring a monk back into the field and one of the things you'll notice is that your opponents want to remove Ursula a lot. It's a high value target for them, uh, it's a, high, a big threat to them, so they need to get rid of Ursula and you're going to be able to play more Ursulas over and over and that's going to kind of refill your backup line as well. In a similar uh, way, we're going to have Ingus to bring uh, these two CP standard unit backups onto the field uh, from your hand. So he's a really good play to keep pressure on your oppo opponent because he comes into the field, he plays a backup or forward monk, uh, and then you have, let's say, uh, either one forward and one backup or two forwards, and uh, you can even use him to bring something in and then use Ursula's ability and, and it kind of gives you a lot of flexibility that way to keep the pressure on. Now you might notice that I have one of him and one of the Opus 5 Ingus and that's something that I am testing out right now. The Opus 5 Ingus is one of my personal favorite cards and I think he works very well in this deck. Uh, but if this was a wind earth deck, a wind, uh, a earth fire, earth water versions of my monk decks, then I would be running the Opus 2 Ingus out of two of instead to just be exclusively bringing in different backups. Uh, and in those decks, he could actually color fix for you by bringing in standard unit backups of those other colors. Um, so next up we have Kusith, which is just a high value uh, summon, great for bringing monks to your hand, great for bringing uh, Ursula to your hand. Luminous Puma, similarly, uh, just super great cycle, uh, very, very powerful card. Uh, Pururu as well is just an awesome card to be bringing things uh, back to your hand and since it is a character it can be whatever you want, so just more uh, recursion. And then Miner allows you to bring back some monks as well since you're going to be breaking them so much. And that's kind of the neat thing about this deck is that you're likely to have backup slots to play these cards. Uh, so it, it helps that you can break a monk, play a Miner, get a monk back, and then start the chain all over again. So the final thing I want to talk about is just kind of rounding out some of the cards that are in the deck and what their uses are. So first up we have C card. Now C card is... Uh, deceptive card because at 4 CP 8k that's usually a pretty rough uh, card to play if it doesn't have something really good going for it because it's just a big investment that can be removed but he does have built-in protection for himself against damage but also built-in protection against uh, uh, damage for the rest of your earth forwards so he's very strong in this deck he works very well with Raubon uh, to allow Raubon to come in and ping something for 9k and if you have both um, 
uh, and a crow and sea card out then Rabon's going to survive or if you have any combination of sea card and a crow ingus then Rabon will survive uh, his ETB and be able to just ramp up your advantage even more uh, the sea card also is great for protecting your Ursula because again she's going to be a high value target for your opponent we also have Cecil, uh, and this isn't just because this is a, a four theme channel, it's because he's just really good. His special is good, his ETB is good, and he's one of your only huge beaters in the deck. Uh, but that's on purpose because we generally aren't playing off five backups every game, so three to four is where you're at and, and you don't need that many five cost cards. We also have Zuzuhisa, which is one of my favorite Earth cards since it was printed. I only have a one of right now, but I feel like that's all you need sometimes. And he can just draw you lots of cards and, and it's just good for cycling through your deck to get to your important cards. Hecaton is one of the best Earth summons in the game and works very well when you are stronger than your opponent because we're, we have so many power up cards, Kadaj, Wall, uh, Ingus, all these cards. Hecaton works very well in this, uh, also works very well with C card. Titan is another card that is just super powerful. One of the best ways to use this is in combat. You block with one forward and boost it with Titan by making it a, uh, ping a different forward and then you go two for one or maybe not, you don't even lose your two. If you use Titan with Ursula to ping somebody, you could then break a monk and then uh, kill a second forward and if she blocked maybe a third forward, you're getting a little ambitious at that point, but it's it's really that good. It can, it can work quite well uh, with Ursula. Mist Dragon is a necessary card for this meta. Uh, in general, just break yard or uh, break zone um, disruption is just very important, and we need to have it in the deck. And then on our backup line, we got one Shantoto, which is just it's always good to have. Uh, so. I put it in here, originally I didn't have it, but I ran into enough aggression, especially with all the Final Fantasy 7 decks out there, that I think you do need it. And then finally Sid Garland, and Sid Garland is part of why my backup count is so low, because he can find you uh, Earth backups. Now if, if you're looking at that 16 backup and one of them Shantoto and that's scaring you a little bit, that's okay, you can cut something else to put an extra backup in. I would probably cut a Titan uh, or perhaps even one of the Inguses once you've tested them out a little bit to see if you need to make room for that extra backup in your lineup. And that's going to be it for the deck tech, but I want to know what you guys have to say. Have you built a monk deck yourself? Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to build monk decks, lots of different elements to try it out in. So please, by all means, share what you've done in the comments below. I'd really love to just take a look at your lists and see if there's anything that I can learn from you. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you like the new deck tech setup. I hope to do more of these in the future. And I also hope to uh, have a few contests coming for some giveaways. So. Uh, we'll be, be back soon with that uh, and thanks for coming by see you next time thank you so much for watching this video you can check out my articles at themissidiapost.com and support my patreon at patreon.com slash themissidiapost please be sure to check out cardsatevilise.com for all your FFTCG singles and product needs I also want to thank FFDex for creating a fantastic site that we use every day until next time keep it real Missidians